If it wasn't for those 5.1 million people voting on November of 2018, I would not be able to be voting today right now. There's a class of citizens that could determine the future of the Sunshine State, but only if they can secure their voting rights. I am over ecstatic about this paper. I can't wait to be able to go. When I go to the poll, I'm going to be shouting and jumping. Floridians overwhelmingly cast ballots in 2018 to restore the voting rights of formerly incarcerated people. When you talk about re-enfranchising 1.4 million Floridians, that is definitely a game changer. But then this happened. Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a bill that requires Florida felons to pay court-ordered fines and fees before their voting rights are restored. That law left more than a million would-be voters in this swing state in limbo, while their battle to vote made its way through the U.S. court system. Hitting it there, and now I'm going to hit the record button here. And in the time it took me to produce this story, a pivotal appeals court decision came down less than two months before the election, and its impact changed the trajectory of this film. It's a fundamental right given to every American citizen that is born in this country, and my voice matters. It's a sweltering August morning in Florida, and for the first time in 30 years, Desmond Mead is casting a ballot. I knew that today was not just a day about Desmond, right? It was a, it was a much bigger purpose. Are you coming in to vote? Yeah. Desmond is one of the millions of U.S. citizens whose voting rights were revoked because of a felony conviction. Back in the civil rights era, that's what family did. You know, family, they voted together. And as he walks toward the polling station with his family beside him, he's also bringing something else. There's so many people in this country that have died just for the right to vote. And so this is not something that I was taking lightly. So I brought all of my ancestors that was hung on trees, that was burned, that was bitten by dogs, that was sprayed by fire hoses. I brought their spirit with me in there, but I also brought over 774,000 returning citizens who can't vote. Restoring voting rights to formerly incarcerated people isn't only Desmond's personal journey, he's made it his life's work. I'm keeping it as a souvenir. <laughs> as the executive director of the Florida Rights and Restoration Coalition, he spent years working on this and he continues pushing even minutes after he's left the voting booth. Honey. Find the fees. Right, right. You give them that. Okay. All right? All right? Okay. The FRRC is an organization focused on ending discrimination against formerly convicted people and helping them to vote. Desmond says it's raised nearly $4 million to dismiss debts so free people with felony convictions can vote. He says it's already paid off nearly $2 million in fines and fees. So we trying to rewrite the song. How did the song go? Um, two chains. Bands will make them dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now bands let them vote. Okay, I got so you. Bands will let them vote. That's right. Desmond is doing this work in the country that locks up more people per capita than any other nation in the world. And in the state that nationally accounts for more than a quarter of all felony disenfranchisement. That includes currently incarcerated people who aren't allowed to vote. I just received my vote by mail application that I am going to fill out and turn in. Around one in 40 adults in the U.S. cannot vote because of a felony conviction. Raquel Wright is one of those people. And by the end of this story, she'll know whether she'll be able to cast a ballot in the presidential election. The first time I learned that my voting rights had been impacted was when I went to the DMV to reinstate my driver's license. As young as I can remember, it's been a tradition in my family that when we vote, we vote together as a family. The tradition continued when she returned home. Even though she couldn't vote, she still went with her family and sat in the car as they cast their ballots. I know how important voting is to both of us. So when I voted, it was like me standing in the gap and voting for her as well. And I wanted to share her to also still be able to share in that moment that even though she couldn't physically go in, I was there for her and I will always stand in the gap for her. It meant everything. It was, it was almost signifying of passing the torch. Raquel lives in one of the 48 states that restricts voting for people with felony convictions. 
11 of them, which includes Florida, maintain restrictions on some or all of the people who've completed their prison, parole, or probation sentences. And the people affected in those 11 states account for nearly 50% of the entire felony disenfranchised population. Raquel had immense excitement when the majority of Floridians backed Amendment 4 legislation, which restored voting rights to formerly incarcerated people. When I saw Sorry. When I saw Amendment 4 go across the bottom of that screen and it had the number 64% with a check mark beside it, I knew instantly that all of our hard work, all of our sweat, all of our blood, all of our tears that we poured into this initiative had been triumphant. It wasn't done in vain. She wasted no time taking advantage the moment voter registration opened. I actually got on at 12.03 because they didn't open up until 12 midnight. And the system was overloaded. It crashed. I actually waited until January 17th. And I went back on and I was actually able to register. Raquel was able to vote in the Florida primary in March, but her freedom was short-lived. State Republicans quickly added a roadblock by requiring people to pay fines and fees before regaining their right to vote. Governor Ron DeSantis today signed a bill requiring Florida felons to pay court-ordered financial obligations if they want their voting rights restored. There is no central database telling people how much they owe. Just by being in the legal system, you can accrue debts to a variety of state agencies, making it hard to pinpoint how much is due. It's a struggle Raquel has relayed to her daughter. So you know why I go through what I go through with the voting and making sure that you see how important it is to always raise your voice for the right thing. Like so many others, initially Raquel didn't even know what her debt was. When she finally found out, the bill was much more than she could afford as a mother with two part-time jobs relying on her parents for some assistance. It was 47000 um, and that was in not including court fees. Court fees and costs was in another, another 4000 um, and some change. They add interest to that fee. So now it's in excess of $72,000. There's no way possible in the position with employment that I'm in now that I could ever, ever, ever pay that back, ever. The maze back to voting rights is so convoluted, a judge said in a blistering 125-page opinion that the GOP had created a system that was an administrative train wreck and a pay-to-vote system. I feel like I have a scarlet letter on my chest forever. And that's why I fight so much to restore voting rights for returning citizens like myself. Xavier, do, are, we, are we live streaming that link on, on our Facebook page for the oral arguments? In another part of Florida, Desmond is tuning in to the opening arguments of the 11th Circuit Court, which will determine whether formerly incarcerated people like Raquel will have to pay back fines before regaining their right to vote. I had the uh, opportunity to meet Congressman John Lewis, and I, I never forget uh, we, when he told us that me and my wife, Sheena, that the work that we were doing was a continuation of the civil rights movement. I thought of Desmond watching the arguments and these words from Raquel. I have a lot of anxiety about it, simply because I want to be a participant in this election so bad because it is a very pivotal time. As I edited this story on September 11th, after a lengthy process, the appeals court decided formerly incarcerated people must pay fines and fees before regaining voting rights. And I knew I had to call Raquel. So the news came down Friday from the 11th Circuit Court, and I don't think it was news that you were hoping to hear. It, it's disheartening. Um, I did have a moment Friday. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm not human. I actually cried. As soon as we accomplish one goal, um, they, mo they moved the finish line. And it's just a, a direct example of the fact that the fear of our voice that they have. There's power in the voice, there's power in the vote, and it's evident by their actions. 
The decision is a win for Governor DeSantis and a loss for people like Raquel. What are you going to do with your ballot? Friday, I almost ripped it up, um, but I did hold it in my hand while I was crying. And I looked down at it and I looked back up and I'm like, this is worthless. Why am I holding on to this? Why am I teasing myself with it? And I, I just could not bring myself to rip it up. It's a firm believer to me that this will come into fruition. Her only hope now relies on an appeal to the Supreme Court, which isn't guaranteed to review the case. And even if it did, a decision likely would not come down in time for the presidential election, meaning Raquel will not vote with her family this year. If not now, when? And it may be five, six elections from now where my daughter is casting her vote. And I just have to, again, accompany her to the polls, sit in the car, wait for her to cast her vote, and embrace her civil duty with her on my behalf because I can't, I can't. How does it hurt this state? How does it hurt this country to allow American citizens to be able to vote? It's not gonna hurt the country. It's gonna help the country because the more people that are involved, the more vibrant our democracy becomes. So far, the Florida Rights and Restoration Coalition has helped 4,000 Floridians regain their right to vote. And in a nation where 6.1 million people are barred from voting because of their felony convictions, what happens in Florida has seismic consequences for the U.S. At the end of the day, what's right is right, and they ought to let my people vote.